This is a sample of hydrogen gas in a sealed glass tube. The glass tube contains two metal electrodes, one at each end, and the metal electrodes can be hooked up to a power supply so electricity can be run through the gas. The electricity excites electrons in the hydrogen gas, causing them to rise to higher energy levels, then fall down and emit the light you see here. A special filter allows us to see that this light is not actually pink, but a combination of four different colors of light, which you can see here as bright lines. Those bright lines are called the bright line spectrum of hydrogen. Red, blue-green, blue, and a violet line. These lines have a lot to do with the structure of electrons in the hydrogen atom, so let's do some math problems concerning their frequency and wavelength. Before we can get to any calculations, we're going to have to review some of the history of the atomic theory and the different models of the atom. The birth of the modern atomic theory came with John Dalton's model in the early 1800s. Dalton said that atoms were the smallest particles that existed, and they kind of looked like that. J.J. Thompson did his uh, cathode ray tube experiment and proved that part of the atom was negatively charged and he said that these negative charges were spread out throughout a general positive area of the atom. Ernest Rutherford did the gold foil experiment and proved that the positive part of the atom was actually a very, very dense nucleus and that most of the atom was made up of empty space. Niels Bohr in 1913 proposed that not only did the electrons orbit a dense nucleus, but they were also only allowed to exist in certain separate orbits or energy levels. He named them 1, 2, 3, so you see n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So the Bohr model shows a few specific things. Since atoms absorb energy and their electrons become excited, the excited electrons can rise to higher energy levels. When these excited electrons fall back down to lower energy levels, they release light. Since only certain colors of light are released, that shows that only certain energy levels are available. That's what we saw with the hydrogen bright lines. A few things about light will be important to review as well. Light can be thought of as both a wave and a particle. It's a wave when it's traveling and it's a particle when it's interacting with matter. Light waves have frequency and wavelength, just like any waves. The equation that relates frequency and wavelength is that it's given on the formula chart. C represents the speed of light. Its value is also given on the formula chart. F is frequency, and that other symbol is for the wavelength. The color of light is closely linked to its frequency and its wavelength. As a particle, we call uh, light particles photons, and this equation uh, is important for the particles of light. It's the energy of a photon. Energy of a photon is determined by H times F. H is Planck's constant, and F is frequency. The equation and the value of H are given to you on the formula chart. Notice that as frequency gets higher, energy would get higher, and low frequency goes with low energy. Okay, here are the bright lines of the hydrogen spectrum. We're going to look closely at one of these bright lines and the photons that are causing it. The red bright line is made up of photons with wavelength of 6.56 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. In this problem, we're going to calculate the frequency of those photons, or frequency of those light waves. Given the wavelength of 6.56 times 10 to the negative 7th, and using the equation from the formula chart and the value of C from the formula chart, we would set up the problem this way. Write down the equation, substitute in the value of C and the wavelength, solve for the frequency by dividing both sides of the equation by the wavelength, just like that. If you do it this way, the frequency you get is 4.57 times 10 to the 14th hertz, hz. That's the units for frequency. Now try one on your own, this time using the blue-green line from the spectrum.
those photons have wavelength of 4.86 times 10 to the negative 7. So calculate the frequency of this light just like before. There's the equation, the value of C, and the value of the wavelength. Pause the video, do your calculation, and then press play and check your work. If you did it right, you set it up like you see there, and you would, would have gotten a frequency of 6.17 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, back to the red line, which has the wavelength you see there and the frequency that we calculated. The next calculation is a calculation of energy. How much energy does one photon have? The frequency that we solved for before is right there in the red box, 4.57 times 10 to the 14th. So given that, let's find out how much energy one photon of this light has. What we know is the equation from the formula chart. H, Planck's constant, also given on the formula chart, and the frequency given in the problem. Set it up like that. Substitute in the value of H and the value of the frequency like that. Multiply them together and solve. What you should get is 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Joules are the unit of energy. That's how much energy is in each individual photon of light. Red light. Alright, you try one now with the blue-green light. One photon of blue-green light has how much energy? The frequency that we solved for earlier was 6.17 times 10 to the 14th. You're going to use the same equation in the same value for Planck's constant. Pause the video, solve, and then check your answer. If you did it right, you would have gotten 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19th joules of energy per photon of blue-green light. So let's see how this makes sense with the Bohr model. Those circles represent the energy levels. The red line of the hydrogen spectrum is produced by electrons falling from level 3 down to level 2. Every electron that falls down releases one photon of red light. The blue-green light is caused by electrons falling from the fourth level down to the second level. It's a further fall, so there's a different amount of energy, there's a different frequency, a different wavelength, and a different color. This makes sense because the energy of the red light is less than the energy of the blue light, the blue-green light. Since the electrons fell further, the energy that they release in the form of light is greater. Larger fall, more energy. Let's summarize what we've just learned. The different models of the atom throughout history proceeded from Dalton through Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr. Bohr's model was based on experiments with light that we saw at the beginning of this video. Only certain energy levels are available which is why you only see certain bright lines in the spectrum of hydrogen, and electrons falling to lower energy levels release light. Light energy, color, frequency, and wavelength are all closely linked by the relationships you see here in this table. Let's look at a few pairs of variables. Wavelength and frequency are related like that. Greater wavelength corresponds to lower frequency. Frequency and energy are linked in the opposite way. High frequency, high energy. Put those together and you see wavelength and energy are opposite. Small wavelength goes with high energy. 